and you're going to take some rules on how to use an apostrophe. So in the next page of your grammar book, you're going to set up uh, two column notes, head it with the title apostrophe rules, and then you're just going to have four rules. So you can set them up as questions if you'd like to, or just set them up as bullet points. So the first rule, rule number one, is with singular possessive. Add an apostrophe S to show that one person or thing owns something or is a member of something. So for my examples, I would add an apostrophe S to the end of the noun that shows ownership of something. Mrs. Culleton's lime green Hummer. It's showing ownership that Mrs. Culleton is one person owning one car, one Hummer. The stray dog's food. One dog, one stray dog, and the food that someone had left out for him. Billy, one boy, owning or belonging or being a member of this lacrosse team. And Jess's favorite book. Now this one's kind of unique because it already ends an S and you might think it's awkward to put the apostrophe S and I would say that it's probably justifiable to do it either way. Um, I know I've seen singular possessive without the apostrophe S, just with an apostrophe, but I kind of like rules to live by. I think it makes life a little easier when you have a simple rule that applies to everything. So a simple rule is if it's in singular, you always add an apostrophe S. So just ends in S, it's one person, I would add an apostrophe S. So I want you to try it with these four. Uh, you're going to copy these as examples in your notebook and then um, pause the screencast and then you'll go ahead and check your answers. So in this case, we're talking about one stepmother and the face that belongs to her. So I would add the apostrophe S. Uh, the Queen's Visit. Oh, incidentally, all of these sentences came out of The Land of Stories, The Wishing Spell by Chris Colfer, um, which is one of the books I'm getting ready to start to read. So I thought it might be interesting, whoops, for you to see sentences right out of books that you could be reading. Um, so one queen showing possession of the visit, the queen apostrophe S visit. Here we're talking about one grandmother. Their one grandmother's constant smile suddenly faded. I added apostrophe S. And here's an example of a situation where the singular noun, one class, already ends in an S. I would add an apostrophe S. Rule number two goes with plural possessives. Add apostrophe S to plural nouns that do not already end in an S. Um, so we look at the word children's. Singular is child, the plural is children's. Children does not end in S in its possessive or in its plural form, so we would add an apostrophe S to show ownership of the toys. This example, we're talking about hundreds of cacti, so cacti is the plural of cactus. Since cacti does not end in an S but is plural, we put an apostrophe S, the hundreds of cacti's flowers. Now something to note that most plural nouns do end in an S, so pay attention as we go on to rule number three. Rule number three says only add an apostrophe if the plural noun already ends in an S to show ownership. So looking at these two examples, we're talking about all of the teachers. It's not one teacher's lounge, it's a lounge that belongs to all the teachers, plural. We would put teacher's apostrophe. In this case, your parents' car, both of your parents own that car. So it's parents, plural, with an apostrophe at the end. Most of our plurals, and it's really important when you're thinking about writing, are you talking about a singular or a plural? Most of our plurals end in S. So this is where I see most of the mistakes when we're looking at apostrophes, is that um, you'll put the apostrophe S even though you're talking about a plural. So in these examples, take a second right now and you're going to write these, you can just write the underlined parts in your notebook as examples. Think about whether uh, it's singular or plural, although I'm telling you they're all plural, and whether they need a, just an apostrophe or an apostrophe S and then we will check them. So here we're talking about the twins, both of the twins, 
and the postures that belong to them. Sometimes a good hint to you is to look at the noun that comes after and see if that's plural. That doesn't always work, but if you're in, in doubt, that's a good thing to try. Again here, the stepsisters abuses. We're talking about Cinderella. She had two stepsisters, plural, and the abuses they inflict upon her. So that's an apostrophe. Stepsisters already ends in an S, so just an apostrophe. Down here, we're talking about several deer. Now, deer is one of those irregular nouns that can be both singular and plural. Um, and since it does not end in an S, we'd add an apostrophe And then the last rule goes with contractions. When combining two words into one, put an apostrophe in place of the missing letters. They will becomes they'll. You took out the W-I and you add an apostrophe in its place. Do not becomes don't. You're missing a zero, an, an O, so you put the letter O in place, of, or the apostrophe in place of it. So take a second and do these examples in your notebook. And then on the next slide, we will go through and check them. There is becomes theirs. Here's the I that's missing. We put the apostrophe in it. Same with she's is missing the I. You put an apostrophe in the middle. I am becomes I'm. And was not becomes wasn't. So later this week, you'll be spending some time doing some fun drawings that go along with mispunctuated sentences, thinking about how the meaning of the sentence changes when the apostrophe isn't there.